Hello guys, in this video we will go through another feature of Kamunda, this time it will be Java Delegates. This functionality is rather straightforward, it is really about delegating a bunch of your process logic into the Java code, and this approach allows you to basically customize the process execution according to your needs. Also, it can be enhanced with fill injection, but enough talking, let's jump into the code. Let's quickly model a simple process that we will use to showcase the basics of the Kamunda Delegates feature. For this tutorial purposes, we will start with something very simple with only one service task and this service task will be the one that will utilize the logic that we will implement in the code. Let's create a simple class that will carry this logic. It is necessary that it implement a Java delegate interface, but it also has to override an execute method. This method will be the one that will be called upon service task execution. For this tutorial purposes, let's go with something simple, so let's just log something on the console. Now let's get back to the modeler. If you click on the service task, on the right hand side in the properties panel, you can choose the implementation. Let's go for Java, and in the Java class field, let's pass the full name of the class with the package. At this point, it is worth mentioning that you can choose different implementations. If your business logic is written in Java, then you're likely to want to use the implementation type of Java class or delegate expression. In both cases, they would be calling a Java class which implements a Java delegate. The only difference is mainly based on how they are called. With Java class, the engine will create instances of the delegates, hence you'll have almost no possibilities to set up the objects. If you use delegate expressions, you can set up and wire your delegates as you like, for instance using Spring Boot and its wiring capabilities. Now let's start the application. It is a project generated from Kamunda Initializer, and by default it will start on localhost.8080. From Kamunda Modeler, let's quickly deploy our fresh process definition, and if we go to the task list, we can finally run our process. Remember, it has only one service task which is supposed to implement the logic of our delegate class. Now that the process has successfully started, we can go back to our code editor and in the console you can see that indeed the execute method was called and something was printed on the console. That's how easy it was to embed some Java code logic into the service task. Of course, Java delegates present way more possibilities and for instance another one worth embracing is field injections. Let's go back to the modeler and if you click on the properties panel of our service task, there is a field injections tab. Let's add one simple field injection, just a simple string value. Now in our delegate class, we need to create an expression which will be corresponding to the field injection value. And this expression is something that is also accessible in our code. For this tutorial purpose, we will just print it on a console. Of course, the change in our delegate requires us to run the application again, and we also want to redeploy the process definition. Now, if we rerun the process, you can see that the expression injected through the modeler was printed on the console. Regardless of the type of the value declared in the process definition, the type of the setter and the private field of the injection target should always be expression. Remember that the private fields cannot always be modified. It does not work with the CDI bins because you have proxies instead of real objects or with some security manager configurations. Always use a public setter method for the fields that you want to have injected. There is also another way that allows us to manipulate process variables and that is through delegate execution passed to the execute method. To give you an example, we can quickly add one more simple task to our process, which will also produce a simple string variable on the output. In our delegate class, we can just simply call getVariable method from delegate execution and extract the process variable. Let's print it as well and see what happens. There we go, another way of manipulating process variables. Of course, through the same way using delegate execution, we can set process variables, but the point is that the delegate execution is a huge accelerator that enables you to manipulate variables, query process engines, or even create and resolve incidents. Java delegates can be attached to a BPMN service task. To implement a class that can be called during process execution, this class needs to implement the Java delegate interface and provide the required logic in the execute method. When process execution arrives at this particular step, it will execute this logic defined in that method and leave the activity in the default BPMN way. 
Process instance information, such as process variables and other information, can be accessed and manipulated through the delegate execution interface. It is possible to inject values into the fields of delegated classes. The injection happens each time the service task is called, since a separate instance of the class will be created. That's pretty much about it when it comes to Java delegates. As you can see, this mechanism allows you to be in full control of the process business logic through the Java layer. And that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.